Good Saturday morning. Matt Ray sitting in KGO Radio 810. We're taking your calls at 415-808-0810. is the number. Russia has shipped troops into Ukraine, uh, repeating its invasion threat. Meanwhile, the residents of Crimea are getting set to vote on that referendum on whether or not to annex themselves closer to Russia and away from Ukraine. The U.S. is threatening sanctions. Uh, President Obama calling it a violation of international law. Vladimir Putin says, go ahead, uh, put those sanctions on us. It will reverse. Uh, we'll reverse it on you. I don't know how the heck they plan on doing that. But, you know, why is uh, why are we not getting through to this guy, Vladimir Putin? What's the deal with it? That brings us to our guest this hour. His name's Dusty Staub. He's a leadership expert. The website is staubleadership.com. How are you today, Dusty? I'm doing very well, Matt. Thank you. Thanks for joining us here on KGO. You know, a lot of uh, a lot of Republicans, I think, uh, which is unwarranted in my opinion, are are going after the president's uh, leadership style right now. They're going after his uh, they're going after his foreign policy in a time when I think you know we all just need to be working together on this and 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 getting it you know getting our head straight on on what's going to happen and how we deal with this, but. You know, anything President Obama has said to Russian Vladimir President Putin, uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin right so far hasn't worked. So, you know, what's the difference in leadership styles there and why are the two not coming together on a common page here? Well, first, I, I really like your comment. The nation really does need to rally around the president. Uh, he is uh, he needs all the support and help he can get right now. This is a really difficult situation and it's very challenging. I think the problem is that Putin is like the uh, the muscular bully, mm -hmm. and Obama is appearing like the 98-pound weakling on the beach right now. One of the challenges is that, that Obama is very smart, he's very articulate, he's very well-spoken, but sometimes I think he can mistake a speech for taking action. And when he said there'd be consequences, there was no real uh, meat or beef behind that. And I think that's the problem because Putin does not respond to, to logic. He does not respond to calls to his better nature. He does not respond to law. He responds to force and he responds to power. And unfortunately, through a series of things that have happened over the past year, the president of the United States is appearing weak. And I think Putin is taking advantage of that. When you say a series of things that have happened over the past year, what do you mean by that? Well, uh, let's let's take uh, Syria. When uh, Assad in Syria gassed his own people, killing most of them children, and Obama had warned there was a red line that if he gassed his own people, there would be military action. The red line didn't turn into a red line at all. And what's happened is Assad's position is stronger. He seems to be winning the war at this point. And I think that only encouraged Putin and other dictators, uh, other bullies in the world, because the United States appeared weak. When you don't back up your words with actions, it would have been better if he had not said there's a red line. It would be better right. if he said, if you take this action, there will be consequences. It would be better than there's a red line, because the red line says you cross it. Well, he crossed it, Assad crossed it, and there were no real consequences. And I think that was a big mistake. So I think the president really needs an advisor who's more strategic. One of the things is Putin is, a, is kind of a chess master. He thinks four or five or six moves ahead. He was planning for Crimea in case he couldn't get it through through uh, the political process, he already had things in place. And yeah. I think that our president is, looks like he's playing checkers against a, somebody who's playing chess. So we need a chess master to join the president to give him some advice and some help so that he can begin to understand what he's dealing with. At this point in the game, though, I mean, how do you do that? I mean, uh, you know, President Obama, he's risen uh, from the ranks to, to become... You know the leader. Uh, the leader. He's the president of the United States. So you know, is, is anything going to change now? I mean, what would change that now? His leadership style so far has worked, in, well, in his he, mind. He, he, he's. It, I, I would dispute that. I think that it's worked to a certain extent, but I, I do not think uh, he was elected on hope and the idea of uniting the country. It's more divisive. Um, not politics as usual, and it's definitely politics as usual. And I think that uh, Obama is a very good man with good intentions and good values. I just don't think that he has had the strategic guidance or insight uh, to help him. And I think that two things, I think, need to come forward. I, I wrote a little book called The Seven Acts of Courage. This is one of my three books. And The Seven Acts of Courage, I talk about the imperative courage. Where courage stops is where leadership stops. And I think there's two things that Obama could do. One is to really work on the courage to take action. There are things that could be done. We could put in the uh, anti-missile defense in Poland, 
and in Eastern Europe, like we had talked about, which we pulled back from. That would send a very strong message to Putin. There are other things that can be done, and you could take a more muscular approach. Uh, for instance, Obama could go uh, directly to, to Kiev and uh, meet with the, uh, the people that are there, and that would send a very strong message. It could uh, really position um, some military troops to support the anti-missile defenses in Poland and other places. That sends a very strong message. It's more like Reagan and more like a Clinton than a Carter, which is unfortunately what he's beginning to look like. And he's got two more years in his presidency, and I don't think he can afford uh, to look weak. He needs to step up, and I think there are definite things he can do. The second act of courage is courage to be confronted. Obama has, President Obama has tended to uh, surround himself with people who think like him, uh, talk like him. He needs to bring in some other people. When Clinton was failing in his first two years in his presidency, he brought in David Gergen, a Republican, to be his chief of staff. And David Gergen brought discipline and structure and helped Clinton be successful. And Clinton, by the way, stood up to Milosevic in Serbia uh, when NATO wouldn't and led to the end of the genocide and the mass dislocations that are there. We need to see Obama taking some actions, and he needs to be listening to some contrary viewpoints and welcoming them. Hey, Dusty, I want to get you to hold on through the break if I could. Sure. We're talking to uh, Dusty Staub. He's a leadership expert. The website is staubleadership.com. Uh, we'll continue the conversation out of the break here. In the meantime, KGO, the place to turn for traffic on the fives. Mary Rose standing by at the KGO traffic desk. Get it first with KGO Radio and KGO News Alerts. Text news to 35253 or sign up now at kgoradio.com. Good Sunday morning. Matt Ray sitting in on this gorgeous day. Taking your calls at 8088104158080810 is the number. Our guest this hour is Dusty Staub. He's a leadership expert. The website is staubleadership.com. The book is The Heart of Leadership 12 Practices of Courageous Leaders. We are discussing uh, President Obama and President Putin. And, of course, the residents of Crimea getting set to vote on the referendum on whether or not to annex themselves to Russia away from Ukraine. President Obama saying, you're violating international law. We will impose sanctions, uh, travel restrictions, etc. And Vladimir Putin doesn't seem to respond to any of it. And, and Dusty, before we went to the break, you had mentioned that uh, you know Vladimir Putin is kind of like a, a, a chess player. He's always thinking several steps ahead. One of the things that I thought was interesting was, you know, everybody was talking about the Winter Olympics and you know how great it was outside of you know the water and Costas's eye and <laughs> the apartments and hotels and that yeah. kind of thing, and uh, but and Sean White's house. But anyway, uh, you know, and all of a sudden they they end, and the next thing you know, Crimea is being invaded. So, I mean, I think that was kind of, I think that was kind of a, a, a shock to a lot of us that, you know, maybe we're just uh, kind of bystanders and, and kind of just standing by and waiting to see what happened. I think that was kind of a shock, but he had all of that in place. Well, here's the interesting thing is I've, I've made a study of Putin. Uh, he's old KGB school, uh, and I've, I've made a study of leadership. It's, it's kind of been my life at this point. Uh, and I was not surprised. I figured that if he couldn't get it through uh, through the electoral process and the politics of uh, oppression by his stooges in Ukraine, what was going to happen is he already had in place months in advance what he was going to do. And you notice he keeps saying there was no Russian troops in there. There's these mass <laughs> surprise forces, right? That, yeah, but they're not Russian. Well, he he planned this, and and to add confusion. And here's the bad thing is that we, the United States and Europe, uh, the European nations, and our president, we looked like we were flat-footed and caught by surprise. When it was very predictable, he would do this. If he couldn't get it one way, he'd get it the old way, through force. And we should have been thinking three or four steps ahead and had the contingencies, and as soon as we saw that, out, here come the, here come the sanctions, here come the actions. Uh, president Putin, if you take these actions, here are six things we're going to do, and we've already got them in place. That would have shocked Putin. I think yeah. he believes... We react, and when we react, we're slow. He's being proactive, and we've got to become proactive for the world's sake and for our own safety. We talked about uh, the the red line that the president drew over Syria, and it didn't happen, and, you know, he just shouldn't have said that. He just should have said, you know, there will be consequences and, and left it at that until, you know, uh, further uh, – until we, you know, analyzed it further. Does, you know, the the past couple of issues that you brought up over the past year that, that the president has kind of mis, uh, misstepped on, does that make him look bad with the European Union as well? 
Yes, it does. Unfortunately, also with our allies in, in the Middle East, it's like when is a red line not a red line? When is a law not a law? A mandate not a mandate? A deadline not a deadline? Uh, the Affordable Care Act. It looks like he's making it up as he goes along, and he is catering to pressure rather than holding to and sticking to. This is a law. This is a mandate. Uh, you know, and so it makes him look weak. My dad was in the military for 25 years, quarter of a century, and he fought in World War II in Korea, retired as lieutenant colonel, a paratrooper, 500 career jumps. And he used to say to me, he said, son, leadership without action is like a bike without gears. Pedal all you want. You ain't going nowhere. <laughs> and uh, and I, I remember that. And I think that, that the biggest problem is that Putin does not believe that Obama will really back it up. There was a legislature in the Russian parliament that said, yeah, the Europeans and the Americans will complain, and then they'll get over it and forget it all in a few months. That's the belief in Russia by, and by dictators everywhere that unfortunately has been cultivated by our president not being careful enough and not being strategic enough. What uh, do you make of realize- that? I'm I'm curious what what do you make of uh, this past week? Uh, the Russians came out. Uh, Vladimir Putin uh, came out, and uh, John Kerry's counterpart came out, Sergey Lavrov, and they said uh, the U.S. has presented us with this deal, basically. And they said, you know, we're not. It doesn't fit our needs. Uh, they're calling what we're doing a violation of international law. And then uh, at a press briefing, at the State Department press briefing, the media here asked the U.S. about it, and, you know, the U.S. declined to comment on it. Meanwhile, the Russians are putting it out there and saying, look, this is what they said. We're not going to go along with this. Uh, John Kerry has refused to uh, come visit. President Obama has refused to come visit. What do you make of them throwing it all out in the press and the U.S. saying, you know, we're not going to comment on any of that. Again, it looks like we are afraid to take action. It looks like that we are uh, really kind of crouching down in the shadows rather than stepping forward and being champions. Uh, I imagine if you had a Clinton or a Reagan in the White House right now, President Clinton or President Reagan would be over in Kiev. There would be a, a challenge. Just remember Reagan's Mr. Gorbachev, if you mean Glasnost, tear down this wall. Uh, it, it, he stood up to the Soviet Union. Margaret Thatcher stood up to the socialists and, and the unions that were crippling and made Great Britain the poorest of the Western nations at one point. It takes courage to act. It takes courage to stand up. It takes courage to hear contrary viewpoints. And I think that President Obama is really a good man. He could be a good president. Right now he's coming across as a weak one, and that's unfortunate for everybody. Dusty Staub is a leadership expert. The website, once again, is StaubLeadership.com. The book is The Heart of Leadership, 12 Practices of Courageous Leaders. Dusty, we appreciate your time on KGL. Well, thank you very much, Matt. It was a pleasure. Great talking to you. All right. We'll talk to you again. 415-808-0810 is the number. 8088-10 is the number. It should be noted, you know, uh, uh, before that conversation took place, if you're just tuning in, not here to bash on the president. In fact, uh, both of us agree that, you know, th- this this – opportunity that some Republicans are are taking, some Republicans that are going to run in 2016, (laughs) we know the names, uh, you know, to bash the president's foreign policy and to bash the president, you know, that's that's sad to me because we need to be rallying around our president uh, and and not uh, taking shots and and showing the other side that we're divisive. Uh, You know, I just I just think he needs all the support he can get, and, you know, that's really what we should be giving him. So we'll take your calls coming out of the break here at the top of the hour news break at 415 808